Hey everyone, uh, so here's our normal video for the day. I know it's going up super late, uh, but whatever. Uh, how you guys doing? We got a couple stories for you today. Uh, first up, we got some updates on Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak because we're going to get some massive news on that this week. Remember, that is that really big expansion pack coming to Monster Hunter Rise next summer, uh, which we really didn't get a ton of news from, uh, but uh, at least at Nintendo Direct where it was announced. Uh, and then we have also uh, a huge look at the Switch OLED, and yes, Metroid Dread. Hmm. Before I get into that, I want to remind you, we are giving away a uh, Nintendo Switch OLED. Yeah, I know, I've been saying OLED so much today. We are giving away a white version of the Nintendo Switch OLED. Uh, ex exactly this one back here. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, and then show up to our live stream this Friday. Uh, if you go to the channel, there's actually the live streams at the very top if you want to set your notifications for that. All right, so our first story deals with Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. So this week is actually Tokyo Game Show. And there's probably going to be quite a bit of news coming out of Tokyo Game Show, particularly from, you know, partner companies from Nintendo such as Square Enix. So potentially we get some announcements there. But one thing we were kind of looking forward to at Tokyo Game Show was the potential announcement of a new Resident Evil game for Nintendo Switch, that Outbreak Outrage game that's been rumored and leaked a heck of a long time ago, and it, that we're not going to get that at Tokyo Game Show because Capcom has renamed their presentation from Capcom Presents at Tokyo Game Show to Monster Hunter Spotlight featuring Monster Hunter Rise. We presume this is going to be a massive blowout for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is the expansion pack they announced during the last Nintendo Direct that comes next summer. We don't have an exact date on it yet. Maybe we will get an exact date on it here. I don't know. But we're going to get an in-depth, deep dive look at that, I would presume. And for Monster Hunter fans, this is obviously amazing news. For everyone else that aren't Monster Hunter fans that are hoping for something else from Capcom, maybe not so great of news. But at least they are setting the bar of expectations so we could stop expecting things like Resident Evil. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually looking forward to at least seeing what this expansion pack is, even though I haven't played Monster Hunter Rise in quite some time. Uh, but yeah, I'm at least, yeah, they have my curiosity, as they say. Um, but moving on to maybe the bigger part of this video, we have Metroid Dread previews that dropped today. Technically, there was also some Switch OLED discussions that dropped today, uh, but I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Let's first focus on Metroid Dread. So. Nintendo had a in-person event for media across the globe uh, to essentially come to Nintendo's headquarters and play Metroid Dread for 90 minutes. This was true in the UK, in the US at least, and I believe in Japan as well. So they had a number of, you know, th hundreds if not thousands of media members coming to play 90 minutes of Metroid Dread. Now, they're not allowed to show necessarily all 90 minutes of footage. There happens to be some spoilers and some stuff in there. Uh, I think Giant Bomb actually got dinged when they were trying to put up their full playthrough on YouTube earlier today. Uh, Nintendo wasn't taking too kindly to that because there were some things they weren't supposed to show per the NDA, even though they got to experience it. Like, it's stuff they could maybe show later, but you can't show right now. Um, it is what it is. And yes, everyone was playing on a Switch OLED, although based on how Nintendo was treating Switch OLED, that was more like just the system you were playing it on. It really wasn't meant to be a playtest of the Switch OLED. So... What we got from this is essentially a few things. One, I don't want to go too deep in the spoilers because, yeah, we did learn some new information about Metroid Dread, but I do want to kind of focus on the general impressions of Metroid Dread from all of the media outlets that did get to partake in this. And all of the footage you're seeing of Metroid Dread, by the way, is from our friends over at Nintendo Life. They did a full-length feature video on this, and that's exactly the video that I'm going to link down in the descriptions. And I will explain in a moment why I'm good at why I'm choosing Nintendo Life here uh, to share and for you guys to go see. But what I will say is the general impressions are that Metroid Dread is utterly phenomenal and pretty much the best Metroid's ever been. And this is coming from several people in the video game industry who are Metroid hardcore fans who love the Prime series, and they're saying this beats out Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3. This is the best Metroid has ever been. Uh, that is a very tall claim to make. I obviously can't back this up with my own opinion, but in watching a bunch of footage today, it's very clear that this is 
One of the best put together games coming from Nintendo this year. Uh, very highly polished. Very, you know, the gameplay itself looks extremely fluid. It makes sense. The story seems to be phenomenal. The cutscenes, everything seems to be coming together perfectly. I know there's been debate about if Metroid Dread is a true AAA $60 experience. I think that debate is a bunch of bullshit because it's basically de trying to devalue the game for being a side scroller game. Never mind that it has full 3D cutscenes. Never mind that it's 3D in a side scrolling perspective. I honestly think that just because some indie games are 25, 30 bucks or cheaper uh, in a similar style doesn't necessarily mean that this game isn't worth the $60. Remember, all those games that are in these styles are called Metroidvania games. Metroid and Castlevania are the foundations of Metroidvania. Metroid's actually the foundation of everything. So, yeah, Metroid should be the more premium experience. At least that is what we hope. That is what we are led to believe. Uh, so, yeah, Metroid Dread looks phenomenal. Uh, and I honestly can't wait, man. A couple weeks away. Uh, I'm not getting a review copy as far as I'm aware. Um, Nintendo tends to... I don't want to say they, they hate my channel. They don't hate my channel. But they. I'm not a brand ambassador. Probably never will be because of the wild, crazy things that happen on our live streams. That being said, they got to play it on Switch OLED. And there were a number of Switch OLED impressions videos to come out today. Uh, what I find interesting about the Switch OLED impression videos are obviously everyone basically just saying, it looks phenomenal, right? You know, the screen, some people have a hard time adjusting to the size of the screen. Some people don't. Uh, Nintendo at their preview event was doing something really weird. They were saying, sure. You're all playing on Switch OLED, but oh, did you bring your Switch to compare? Yeah, yeah, nope, nope, can't get it out, can't compare, no footage. You can't take a picture, you can't take footage, you can't do anything to actually compare the Switch OLED to the current Switch. I find this a bit ironic considering we did that right here on this channel this morning before the preview embargo even went up. In fact, I didn't even know there was an embargo going up today because I didn't even know about this media event. Uh, that's what's so crazy here is our video went up before all of this and I had no idea these things were even going to happen and I want to give this is where I the reason we chose Nintendo Life is because Nintendo Life did graciously share our video on unprompted on their website which I think also led to Kotaku and others picking it up so thank you so much because still to date our video is like one of the only ones out there actually comparing the Switch OLED to the original base Switch. This was a buddy of mine, a fan of ours who I've been in contact with behind the scenes and we're working out a way to get that Switch OLED or another one, we'll talk about that in a future video, uh, to the studio here uh, ahead of time so I can prepare my content for launch. But what really matters in this moment right now is that Nintendo is really restricting Switch OLED with the media. And I find this to be fascinating because Nintendo themselves hasn't really been advertising Switch OLED. They're almost treating it like it's a version three. So why not let the media do it for them? And the funny thing is, as the day has gone on, more and more unboxing videos of Switch OLED have come out, as it definitely appears. There are several retailers here in the United States that are selling Switch OLEDs early. Um, that's on them if they happen to be pissing off Nintendo. It's not on us for purchasing them. Uh, but yeah, that seems to be what's happening. Uh, there's not any super in-depth videos. In fact, our video is the only one that I'm aware of right now that actually compares it in some way. But I have a grander comparison video coming. I know some people were saying, oh, the video quality is bad. Oh, this, oh, that. I didn't get to physically record it myself. Somebody else did. I have a whole setup here for looking at the Switch OLED. Not only my professional-grade camera here, we're going to have a 4K 60fps camera right up here. It's right off, um, right off the frame here. I'm going to be shooting down on this table, which already has marks on it. Um, we're going to be having them all right here with all lighting, no shadows or anything. It's going to be great. It's honestly going to be a really in-depth look and comparison about them all. The docks, we're going to be taking them all apart. Some people wanted to know if, um, you know, if the, if the new dock is, scratches the switch just as easily as the old dock. So that's something we'll explore on that. We'll take apart the docks and compare the internals and the boards and the build quality. Uh, well, we have a lot to really digest and compare. And honestly, I want to use this video, this end of this video, as a gauge to see what do you want to see in that video. So here are my current plans as they stand today. Yes, we will obviously compare the Switch Lite screen, the normal Switch, and obviously the Switch OLED, playing the exact same games, various games, not just Mario Kart 8. There will be various games shown on them uh, so you, we can see direct comparisons all in one shot. My goal is to do it all in one shot even if I have to buy multiple physical copies or whatever to make it work, it doesn't matter. 
We're gonna have all in one shot right here on the desk. Um, and it's gonna look nice and clean for you guys. And you're gonna get a great look at that in 4K, crisp 60 FPS. Uh, and you'll get it from a high quality camera. So hopefully uh, it'll be the high quality look you guys have all been looking for. Yeah, there'll be tons of B-roll and all that, but that's besides the point. We will also be taking apart the switches and comparing the internals. Is there a new cooling solution? Uh, how did Nintendo move the internals uh, uh, you know, around? Are they using the same memory module just with more uh, memory on it? So to get to that 64 gigs versus 32. Um, there's a lot of things we just don't know about this platform uh, that we're going to find out. It is the same power, supposedly. It is using the same base chip. But are there changes to the motherboard? Why can the dock, as an example, uh, get firmware updates that the original dock can't? Why would it even need firmware updates? And what's different inside that would maybe suggest it needs it? As an example, is there actually a chip on the inside of that dock that can be updated later that can help with upscaling? That is something that actually might be in the dock that Nintendo doesn't want to talk about right now. Uh, because that could be for a future device or future support. Uh, is the Bluetooth audio better? You know, does it use a better Bluetooth chip? That's something we need to test out with various controllers and obviously Bluetooth headset devices. Uh, there's other things that we need to know about it as well. What are the speeds of that LAM port? We'll try to test that as best as we can. Uh, are the uh, USB on the side of the thing still running at 2.0 or are they true USB 3.0? Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that we want to test and do the ultimate comparison for you guys. Uh, so just stay tuned for that. But if there's anything else you guys want to know, just say it down in the comments and I will add that to my ever-growing checklist of things to cover in that video. In fact, if there's specific game suggestions you think would best show off or best not show off the differences between OLED and an LCD panel, let me know because we want to explore that wide spectrum. So even if it's games I don't own, I will pick them up, pick up multiple copies, just so we can compare, you know, the, the OLED in its best light, as in games that should highlight its deeper blacks and whiter whites the most, and ones that maybe wouldn't highlight it the most, and is, you know, do we see a discernible difference? And obviously, we will discuss my conclusion on um, the whole comparison, and if I feel like it's obviously worth the extra 50 bucks uh, to get it, at least here in the United States. I know Europe has just had price drops and all that. So you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. It's been a lot of fun getting that video up for you this morning. A lot of fun doing this one as well. I love what we do here at Nintendo Prime. If you're a new subscriber, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we have a lot more content coming your way, both on Switch OLED and Switch games in general. Uh, we do some every now and then dive deep into other platforms and stuff like that. Uh, just got Eric uh, from the Nintendo Prime podcast. I got his, helped him get his Xbox Series X set up today. Uh, so, and we're sharing our accounts and sharing games and all that jazz. So we had to figure all that out because I haven't used game sharing with Xbox before. Anyways, uh, so yeah, we do talk about other stuff. Uh, Back for Blood's one of our most anticipated games coming out this year besides like things like Metroid Dread, and that comes out four days after Metroid Dread, uh, so that should be fun. But I don't know. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with all new content. Not even sure what that content is because it's whatever floats my boat in the morning. Maybe we'll talk about a game. Maybe we have news to share. Maybe it'll be a discussion video. Maybe we'll review a new product. There's just so many things that could happen. So stay tuned right here at Nintendo Prime. Thank you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.